Today in the news, we got a mystery Intel GPU, some locked overclocking, and RDNA in a smartphone. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. In the last few months, the company has been pretty focused on everything GPU. We saw the design for their Exascale XEHPC Ponte Vecchio GPU late last year, and we saw the XELP Mobile design for their DG1 earlier this year. Well, the company just teased another GPU. In a tweet posted by the Intel Graphics account, we have a new photo. Now, just by looking at this, you would think that it's some sort of server CPU, but it's not. The original tweet doesn't give us much info. All it tells us is that Intel is still remotely working on their future and that Jim Keller and Raja Kuduri don't know how to wear a mask. The nose goes on the inside of the mask, Jim, but a following retweet from Raja Kuduri actually gives us more information. He said that the BAP of all is back battlefielding and be floating. Raja used the term BAP of all, which means father of all, once before while visiting the Intel Bangalore facility. During that visit, he took a picture with the Intel XEHP family and mentioned this father of all GPU. So this is an XEHP GPU. As you can see from this slide, it's likely to be a part of one of these categories here. I'm eliminating gaming here because, well, this is clearly meant to be on a rack like this. Considering the form factor and the size of the heat spreader, this could be one of three things. An absolutely massive die, which is unlikely in my opinion. It could be a multi-chip module for graphics, or, and this is the most likely one here, it's a GPU you die with some HBM modules around it. Also, I don't know why, but the Intel graphics account actually deleted that tweet, which is odd. Moving on, we have ASRock in the news for two reasons. First, the company is kind of going around Intel on a feature for their 400 series boards. The feature is called BFB, or Base Frequency Boost, and it essentially overclocks the base frequency of Intel locked CPUs. According to this slide, it does so by running the CPU as if it was a 125 watt part. You can see that, for example, on the lower end, it can bring an i5-10400 from a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz to a base clock of 4 gigahertz and for a 10900 from 2.8 gigahertz base all the way up to 3.7. For lower end CPUs like the 10400, 4 gigahertz is already the max all core boost frequency, which means the CPU would be perpetually boosting. This feature won't change the turbo boost clocks though. One thing that is a little weird is that the base clock numbers on the ASRock slides are actually wrong. Also, BFB will work on all of the ASRock boards that feature it, not just on Z490. Now, all we need to wait is for Intel's response. Last time you were able to overclock a locked CPU, Intel shut that down real quick. And while this doesn't make the CPU run over the highest turbo, it still makes the boost duration much longer than it's supposed to be. The second piece of news for ASRock is that it looks like the company is embracing Intel. Their Z490 Phantom Gaming 4SR board actually features Intel's new ATX12VO power supply connector. In case you didn't know, the ATX12VO standard replaces the 24-pin connector for the motherboard for a new 10-pin one with exclusively 12-volt lines. This removes the 3.3 and 5-volt supplies. Now, SATA drives and other accessories still need those other voltages. so. ASRock added two tiny four pin connectors for that. Kind of seems a little redundant in my opinion, but I can see how power and data coming from the motherboard instead of being split between two sources might be an advantage. I just don't understand why the power connector is all the way up there, but the data connections are all the way down here. There's also a mystery six pin 12 volt power connector above the 10 pin, but I have no clue what it's for. I tried to find out, but the manual for that motherboard isn't available yet. And in AMD slash Samsung news, we got our first leaked benchmarks for RDNA in a Samsung SoC for smartphones. The benchmarks used are Aztec Ruins on High and Normal and Manhattan 3.1. As you can see, the Radeon equipped Samsung SoC almost triples the score when compared to the Adreno 650, which is the highest end graphics chip currently shipping from Qualcomm. Kind of funny when Radeon and Adreno are actually anagrams of each other. Anyways, the source for this leak is a little shaky, but but if true, it means Samsung chips are about to take over. And that is pretty much it for the news today, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.
just my light. It fell on the wall. But it's fine now. Everything's fine. 